Welcome to 28storms.com. This is your tropical update for the Eastern Pacific and North Atlantic on this Monday, June 20th. The main focus of today's video will obviously be Tropical Storm Beatrice as it continues to intensify to near hurricane strength. But in the meantime, I'm going to quickly go ahead and show you what's going on in the Atlantic Basin. There continues to be three tropical waves progressing from east to west, but thankfully all three of them are fairly weak in nature and all three are also moving into areas with unfavorable conditions for tropical development. So overall we're looking good in the Atlantic Basin for the next three to five days and at the end of this video we'll take a look at some of the model guidance for the long run. Here is a broad look at the tropics this afternoon and once again much of the Atlantic Basin is quiet. You don't really see much in the way of convective activity over the Gulf, Caribbean or Atlantic and that's thanks to the presence of a lot of dry air and wind shear aloft. As we saw in the surface analysis, there was a tropical wave located along the eastern half of the Yucatan Peninsula. But as you notice, it, as it continues to move west, it's going to face nothing but dry air and wind shear. Now obviously we have a completely different beast to the south of Mexico on the Pacific side. That's where we have Tropical Storm Beatrice. And Beatrice will more than likely be upgraded to a hurricane within the next 6 to 12 hours. And as we can see, the outflow is fairly good this afternoon in all quadrants. For the last several days, it looked like some dry air along the northern half of the storm was going to act to restrict the northern semicircle, but the outflow has really taken advantage and control of the, of the immediate area of the storm, so overall this looks fairly healthy. Here is a zoomed in water vapor, and obviously mainland Mexico is a bit more dry in the mid to upper levels along with areas to the northwest for the north and the Pacific, but as long as wind shear values remain light, it's typically harder for the dry air to entrain into the low level circulation of tropical cyclones. Normally the wind shear has to be at least 15 to 20 knots, and as of right now the upper level environment is fairly favorable with mid to upper level ridging aloft. We can see that fairly well using the latest symptoms wind shear analysis. That upper level ridge that's been anchored over much of central and mainland Mexico over the last week is actually now situated almost directly over our tropical cyclone, thus protecting it from any strong vertical wind shear and dry air intrusion. Water temperatures continue to be more than favorable for added development right along the Mexican Riviera. It's not until this storm begins to make a turn more toward the west, way in the three to five day range before the water temperatures really act to weaken our tropical storm. This is the latest visible representation of Tropical Storm Beatrice. As you can see, Beatrice continues to become better organized. We continue to see some of the coldest cloud tops and towers beginning to erupt directly near the low level center of the storm. And if trends continue, it will not be too much longer until we start to begin seeing a ragged eye-like feature. And then over the next couple hours, the National Hurricane Center Reconnaissance Aircraft, along with the Hurricane Hunters, will be investigating the storm to see if, in fact, Beatrice has made it to Category 1 hurricane status. Once again, the latest enhanced infrared also shows us that the coldest cloud tops and strongest convective development is occurring directly near the center. This is a different water vapor perspective, and not only will you notice the near-perfect outflow in the northern half of the storm, but you'll also begin to see the overall pattern pattern that will control the overall movement of Beatrice over the coming days. And as noted in our previous videos, the main steering mechanism has been a mid-level ridge over much of mainland central Mexico. But if you notice toward the second half of this animation, we're beginning to see more troughiness over the desert southwest of the United States and even northwest Mexico. And that's re the reason why Beatrice is beginning to move a bit more toward the north over the last 24 hours. But the one good news is that several of the model members do begin to turn Beatrice toward the west before it makes a direct impact as that trough begins to lift north and the ridge over Mexico begins to make a comeback and builds back more toward the west. Now this is a microwave animation and much like the visible imagery it helps us really get a good idea as to how well organized our storm is becoming. And if you notice in the last few hours of the microwave imagery we really begin to see that inner core begin to tighten up here and that's a sign that a ragged eyewall like feature is beginning to develop so Beatrice is well on its way to minimal hurricane status. Here is another view of the overall steering pattern. As noted, we have that trough beginning to dip down into the southwest United States and northern Mexico. The only good news, though, is that that trough will soon begin to lift back to the, toward the north, and we will see a reemergence of mid-level ridging over Mexico City 
in central portions of the country, and that will cause the storm to bend back more toward the west with time. This is an updated look at the model spaghetti plots, and the good news is that nearly all model members now keep the inner core of the storm just off the coastline, but if some of these northernmost models were to still verify, we can still get minimal hurricane force conditions along immediate portions of the coastline. This is the latest and official forecast track from the National Hurricane Center, and as you can see, the National Hurricane Center is closely following the model consensus, and their latest forecast track does keep the eye or the center of the hurricane just offshore as it maxes out with a peak intensity near 90 mile per hour, which is upper category 1 intensity. And as noted in the model plot, if this storm were to take this track, we can still anticipate hurricane force winds, especially in the hurricane warning outlined area. Once again, due to the favorable upper level ridging aloft, several of the model members do want to continue intensifying Beatrice into an upper end category 1 hurricane now, as we can see here in the latest model plots. It's not until 60 to 72 hours where the model consensus begins to weaken the storm as it moves into cooler water. The primary threat with Beatrice as it approaches the coast continues to be the threat of heavy rainfall. This is the latest GFS 5-day precipitation forecast and the model is still painting much of the coastline with 5 to 10 inches of rainfall over the next 5 days with isolated areas receiving an upward of 10 inches of rainfall. So especially if you live in a mountainous area and within any of these areas that are expected to get 5 to 10 plus inches of rainfall. Please be on the lookout for any hazardous mudslide conditions over there. The rest of the tropics are quiet today, so let's go ahead and take a look at the 12Z GFS to see what the next seven days may bring. This is the latest sea level pressure forecast, and just to get your bearings, this is the deep tropical Atlantic, the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Eastern Pacific. As I loop this, you'll notice that the model really does not develop much of anything out there over the next seven days, which is a really fortunate thing. However, the sea level pressures we will continue to see below normal sea level pressure across much of the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean as the dominating Atlantic subtropical ridge remains fairly weak over the foreseeable future. So if there were to be anything in the Gulf, Caribbean, or Atlantic worth monitoring, it would more than likely be in the areas surrounding the Yucatan Peninsula where sea level pressures are the lowest. And the same can also be said for the Eastern Pacific because it looks like the broad area of low pressure down there or the monsoonal trough will persist and as long as that remains down there we will have the general risk of tropical development but nothing appears imminent at this time. So that is your tropical update for this Monday. Check back later for more continuous updates on what will more than likely be Hurricane Beatrice within the next couple hours. And in addition to the tropical action, we also have a big severe weather day across the Midwestern United States. And we'll go ahead and try to update what's occurring up there as often as possible on our Facebook and Twitter. And we also have a severe weather discussion for today on the website at 28storms.com. So go ahead and check that out. And we'll have more updates, like we said, on Tropical Storm Beatrice. And we'll have another tropical update video by tomorrow afternoon. So thanks for stopping by today. Have a good one.